morning everyone and welcome back to Kids Zone. Thank you for being with us. It wouldn't be the same without you. Today we're going to be continuing on that idea that Jesus said, I am, and he said different things. He said, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the true vine. And today we're going to think about Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What does that mean? Jesus said some confusing things. And today, we're going to think about how the disciples were a bit confused and worried about what was going to happen when Jesus went to die. He knew that he was going to be crucified. And the disciples were worried about that. And Jesus said something amazing. He said, don't worry, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit for you. I'm going to send someone to comfort you and someone to give you strength and to help you to be brave and courageous. But I am the way, the truth and the life. That's those words that Jesus said. And today we're going to start by singing that song which says, One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. And there's a part in it that says, you are the way, and we make a W, you are the truth and you are the life. And we're going to sing that together. So why don't you get up? There's lots of actions to this. So come and sing along with me, One Way, Jesus. Let's go.
we're going to play a game together with directions in it. So wherever you are in your room, why don't you stand up for me just now? And if I point in that direction, then I want you to jump up. If I point down, I want you to go down to the ground and touch the floor. If I point in that direction, I want you to run to the corner and then come back as quickly as you can. And if I point to that direction, I want you to do the same thing. So are you ready? You're going to follow my directions. So first we're going to go up. And now we're going to go that way. Are you back? Are you ready? Down. Let's go down. Let's go, right. Let's go right again. Let's go up. Okay, can we go a bit faster? Okay, let's go. Left. Right. Up. Down. Left. No, that's right. <laughs> Were you confused? Did you get mixed up? Were you a bit concerned that you were going in the wrong direction? Well, that's what we're going to think about today. Sometimes we're looking for direction and we don't know where to go. We don't know which direction to go in. And when Jesus was telling his disciples something important, he was telling them to follow him and not to be worried. So I've got two things for you today. Um, I've got, first of all, I've got a street map. This is a map of Glasgow, actually. I've also got one of East Kilbride and one of Hamilton, it's where I stay. And when I look at the map, it can give me directions about where to go. But I have to know what the map says and how to read the map. So it's not very helpful if you're not really sure about how to read a map. So the other thing that I would normally use rather than a map, because I'm not very good at map reading, is on my phone. And it's a GPS, so I would look at Google Maps and it would say, go straight on for so many metres and then turn right and then turn left and so on. And it would give me instructions about how to follow the directions to get to the place that I want to get to. And the good thing about something like Google Maps is it keeps updating. It never goes wrong. Whereas some of the maps, that map that I've got of Glasgow, is probably quite old now. So there's probably new places in Glasgow that have sprung up that wouldn't be on the map. So when we're looking for direction, we need to know that we can trust the person who's giving us those directions. And that's how the disciples felt when they were listening to Jesus and that he was telling them what was going to happen. So today, I'm going to tell the story, and we're going to tell it together. You're going to follow it with me, and we're going to tell the story as if we are there with Jesus and the disciples. So let's do that now. So imagine that we are in an upper room. It's night time, and all the disciples, all Jesus' friends are beside him, and they're all chatting together, and Jesus is there. And he's teaching them as he goes through the meal. Lots of different things have happened. But most importantly, he cares for his disciples. He cares for his friends. And he wants them not to worry about what's going to happen. But he's also preparing them because he knows that the next day he is going to be crucified on a cross. And he knows that in three days after that, that he's going to come back to life again and then he'll go to heaven and leave the Holy Spirit. So he knows all of these things and he wants to help the disciples to understand what's going on. So imagine if you were one of the disciples, how would you be feeling? Well I know that if it was me I would probably be like Thomas and Philip who would be saying we don't understand what's happening, why are you doing this? Why are you leaving us? And then Jesus had to tell them this. So this is what happened in the story. They're all sitting down together and Jesus says this, I am going to prepare a place for you. And where I go, you also can be with me. What does that mean? Thomas says, 
Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know how to get there? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. So all we have to do is to follow him. Jesus knew that he was going to be going to heaven. And he was saying, that's the place that I'm going to prepare for you so that when you die, you will be able to be with me in heaven. I'm preparing a place for you. But the disciples were really worried again. They still really didn't understand. So Philip said to them, how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Why was it important for him also to be the truth as well as the way? Well, it was because he was saying, trust me, I love you and I am going to die for you and then I'm going to come back to life again and then you can live with me forever. Isn't that an amazing story? And lastly, Jesus said, and I am the life. He was saying to them that this is not at all over. When I die, that's not at all over. Actually, I'm going to be able to send the Holy Spirit to live with you forever and you will have the Holy Spirit. For me, I think that's an amazing story. And it's also something that I know for sure, that the Holy Spirit lives in me. Jesus left the Holy Spirit for me and he's prepared a place for me too. And, amazingly, for all you guys as well. So he's prepared a place for you. And what does that mean? Well, it means this. We don't have to worry about the future. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen to the people around us. We can be confident that Jesus loves us and he's prepared a place for us so that we can be where he is. And how do we get there? Well, all we have to say is, Jesus, we love you and we give our lives to you. So the disciples then, were, their worries were taken away and they were able to think about when the Holy Spirit came, they could say, Jesus told us that this was going to happen. We knew that this was going to happen. They were still confused, but they knew that they could depend on Jesus. So when you are worried, when you are concerned about the future, if you're ever thinking, I don't know which way to go, then pray because Jesus has already prepared that for you. And he says this, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. The direction, the truth is that he can de we can depend on him and the life, that we have life, and it says in all its fullness, which is in here, right here and now, for tomorrow and for the future. How amazing is God? How amazing is Jesus to do that for us? Jesus told the disciples that he was going to leave the Holy Spirit. He called him the Comforter. The Comforter. That's like a big hug, isn't it? That the Holy Spirit comes and he comforts us and he strengthens us. He makes us strong. He makes us courageous. He helps us to face any situation because he is with us and he is in us. So we're going to pray together for strength. We're going to pray for those people who perhaps have had uh, family members or friends who have died or who are sick and we're going to pray for them now. So let's do that together. Remember when we talk to God, that's what we're doing. We're talking and we're listening and that's what it means to pray. So let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that you love us. Jesus, we thank you that you prepared that place for us. And Lord, we thank you that you left the Holy Spirit for us right now in this time. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to be comforted, that your arms would be around us. And if we are worried or concerned about the future, Lord, you will give us peace. We pray for those who have lost their lives through this time of COVID. And those who are sick today, Lord, we bring them before you and we ask that you will bring healing and wholeness to them. 
And for the young people who are listening today, Lord, I pray that you'll give them strength and courage to face up to any of the difficulties that they feel just now. Lord, we trust you and we thank you that you are the way to God. You are the life and that you are the truth. And we pray, Lord, that you will know that in our lives this week. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That is us for today. But I have a special thing that I want to show you. A few weeks ago, I asked anyone who was watching the Kids Zone to send us pictures of any of the crafts that they've done. And William and Rachel, their mum had sent me some photographs, so I'm going to show them just now. And that was when Jenny did I Am The Light, and there's lots of kind of the sparkly parts coming out of their pictures. So I want you to look at those pictures today. And I want to encourage you that if you are going to make anything or if you're going to do a wee um, clip of your dancing or if you're singing or if you're joining in, then why don't you send that to me and we can add that in to our kids zone. We really miss seeing you in the flesh, in person, one to one. But we love you and we want you to know that we are close by you even though we can't be right next to you. We can only see you on the television. However, I want you to think about this week and I want you to be dependent on God and know that he loves you and that Jesus says he's the way, the truth and the life. And I pray that for you this week. So thank you to William and Rachel and I hope that you'll be able to join with us to do that. Meanwhile, stay active, stay smiling, stay praying and we'll see you soon on Kids Zone. Bless you. Bye.